Welcome back to our teamwork chapter in our human relations course. Here we will be looking at two things, two topics. We will firstly explain the concept of team dynamics, which is the second bullet point here. And then we will describe different types of team member roles. So paying attention to the different roles on a team, we will likely be doing different things uh, that should be complementary. And so knowing those roles and who occupies what role is very, very useful for good teamwork. But we will start with a quote like we often do. And this is by Margaret Mead. And Margaret said, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Smart, smart people coming together, doing cool things, indeed changes the world. So, team life cycles and member roles. The team development stages are vital to understand how teams form and come together. And that is the Tuckman model, and we will talk about that one next. And as we said, understanding member roles is essential to know how to work with specific team members. So on this slide here, we are seeing the process of the Tuckman team development, uh, which goes in five different stages. And it is the figure one in the textbook. And we start at the top with the forming stage. And we'll talk about each one of these in a bit more detail on their own slides, but just for an overview. After forming, we go into norming where we create norms and the pen is still slow. So patience, patience. <laughs> and thirdly, the conflict stage, which is not always ideal because some people are uh, fearful of conflict and don't do well there. And then finally, in stage number four, do we finally, finally make it to perform, to actually do things that we need to do for the team. And then five, if you are in a temporary team, you will adjourn. But if you're on a permanent team, you will end ideally at stage four, which is your performing stage. So in team stage number one, forming, this is where we all come together. The group is newly formed. If you are on a permanent team, this might also happen if you get new members that comes on the team. This is generally a positive stage. We have good feelings about the team. We're a little excited, maybe a little anxious. We don't really know what to expect. Who's going to be on the team? How do we get along with them? What are we supposed to do? So we're learning. We're learning and figuring things out here. And so if we have a team leader, we look to that person for guidance and direction and what will the goal be. And if we, are, we don't have a designated team lead, that will show up in the conflict stage, which is the next stage, storming. So here we are experiencing maybe a little bit of conflict uh, because we are uncertain. We are questioning about who is in charge, who has the authority, what is it exactly we're supposed to be doing. And as I said on the prior slide, if we don't have a designated team lead, maybe we have some sort of a jockeying for that role. Uh, jockeying for other roles, maybe try a little bit of competition, who's going to do what, uh, maybe a little bit of competition for status, who is seen as the informal leader, maybe. And there's also still some competition and um, conflict around ideas and process and task. What are we doing? How are we doing it? In what order, etc., etc. So if you have ever been on a team, you might tell me it's frustrating to be on the team because, you know, we are going through this storming stage. And certainly everybody does that. So know that that is a normal part of team development. The important part here is really that we are staying open minded and that we are being respectful and that we are listening to other people. And that is something that the team lead should be enforcing. And then we make it to the norming stage. So here we are starting to settle down a little bit. We are starting to accept each other. We are starting to notice what strengths and weaknesses we all have. 
Uh, we might still be going back and forth a little bit with the storming stage uh, as we are figuring things out. And we are here starting to respect authority a little bit more, right? Now that we have figured out who will be leading us, we are starting to pay attention and we are starting to become accepting of each other more than we were in the storming stage. And so now we are focusing on fixing the processes, figuring out the ways we will work together to make sure that we will function together as a team. We are starting to build trust with each other as people are showing up, doing what they're supposed to do. There is integrity. And now the trust piece is forming. And in this third stage, the leader can now step aside because the team is at a place where they can start making decisions. So here in the norming stage, we are funneling towards this performing stage, which is now doing the work. So here in number four, performing, we work together more harmoniously. We have that clear vision or goal Maybe not super clear, but we know in what direction we are going and we are pulling our weight, ideally all of us, uh, to meet that goal. Our formal structures and processes have been set up. We know how to work. We don't really have friction anymore. Negative friction, there can be positive friction. So we are motivated to get work done. And that's what we're doing, right? We're getting work done in this performing stage. And then in adjourning, so if you are in a permanent team, you wouldn't have this, uh, maybe at some deadlines um, in your project, you might experience some adjourning activities, such as recognition of team members or celebrations, right? So if you're on a long project team, it's important that we do these things intermittently. Um, and if you are on a, a permanent, I'm sorry, temporary team, and you are disbanding, then we might be sensing a sense of loss because this is something that has been part of our life now for a while. These are people we've been working with for a while. And so we are losing that piece. And so we might have a little bit of, of grief or um, negative you know, sadness around that loss. So that is the Tuckman model. And it shows the development through which we go as a team from inception to end. And from there, we're going to jump into just one slide that talks about what characteristics should a successful team have. And then we are going in to talk about the team member roles. So this slide lists many of the characteristics that we need to have in place to be successful as a team. We need to have clear goals or vision. We need to be able to communicate well, uh, brainstorming, showing up, coming uh, with our ideas and with our thoughts and there needs to be a safe space, a psychologically safe space for us to do that. Consensus means that most of us um, will agree we can maybe not or we it depends on the team and it depends on the organization. But sometimes having 100% consensus is too challenging. Maybe for your group that works. We need to come together to solve problem. We are committed to the team. We meet regularly. We hand off positively. We are supportive of each other. We have a positive environment. We enjoy hanging out together, spending time, joking, etc. And if, if conflict shows up, as it does always, we cannot expect to be in a conflict-free environment, then we need to handle it properly. So with that, we will be jumping into talking about the team member roles. And so we have extensively studied these different types of roles on a team. And perhaps the most uh, accepted one or known is the theory by Belbin. Belbin. And Belbin came up with nine big roles, major roles and behaviors that exist in a team. And these nine roles were moved into three different categories. And the three different categories are action. So these are the behaviors we would do on a team. They are people. So focusing on the actual team itself and supporting the team. And then thinking, right, our thought-oriented behaviors. 
So under our action behaviors, we have the shaper, we have the implementer, and we have the completer slash finisher. And these will be described on the next slide in more full detail. On the people-oriented behaviors, we have the resource investigator, we have the team worker and the coordinator. And in the thought-oriented behaviors, we have the plant. Isn't that a nice name to be a plant? Um, we have the monitor evaluator and we have the specialist. Very cool nicknames here. All right, I can't check the specialist off because my pen didn't work so well there. All right. So here are the nine different roles spelled out in more detail. So let's go through them and we'll just circle around here. So the resource investigator is a person very optimistic and contributes to the enthusiasm to the team. They are positive, they are happy, open to opportunities, and it's their strength to explore options. That's why they are an investigator explore options for the team. The coordinator is a person focused on meeting and clarifying goals and delegating. This person needs to be careful not to be seen as delegating too much of their own work, right? So they can help structure and delegate, but they can't just give out work because people will be offended if they feel that their workload is unfair. The monitor evaluator is the person with the more strategic approach, strategic approach to the team. They see all the possible options and avenues, and they need to make sure that they are open to other people's ideas and also focusing on exploring others' ideas, inspiring others' ideas. The shaper is the one who has the drive and the willingness to overcome challenges that could occur in a group. This person has strong drive, but because of that, they need to be careful to not offend other people. We can't run people over. I'm going to loop back and I'm going to come up here to the team worker before I finish off with the completer finisher. So the team worker is a team member that contributes to the team by assisting to alleviate friction among the people on the team. They tend to be good at cooperation, but they also sometimes have a tendency to avoid confrontation, which is not always a great place to be because conflict happens, right? Remember Tuckman. The plant focuses on creativity and generating ideas for the team. A downside of this uh, is that they need to focus on details and that they're communicating effectively so that they go, don't get too abstract with their creative ideas. The specialist is usually the person that has specific expertise, like a SME uh, subject matter expert, that they can contribute to the group. And because of this, it's important that they take a more broad view, like the strategic person over here, right? Remember the monitor evaluator has a more strategic view. Um, and they can't just get stuck on too many technicalities, too many details that are not useful. The implementer is the reliable and efficient person in the group. They have the ability to take the ideas and turn them into action items. So they need to be careful so that they are open to new possibilities and flexibilities if we need to change course. Then finally, we have the completer and the finisher. This is the person that perfects the final product that the team has put together. They, this person has a great attention to detail, but may have trouble finding themselves delegating and they worry needlessly about the final outcome. So I'm sure that you are recognizing your own uh, behaviors in some of these roles. And so, as you know, one big part of growing uh, is your self-awareness. And that's one of the EQ uh, skills, right? Your emotional intelligence skills. So go back to the team member roles and figure out who do you tend to be? Is that this the most useful role? Have you switched roles before? Uh, and so think through your roles, where you should be, where you could be. Have you been switching between roles and how did that feel? And then also think about a team here in number two bullet point that you have been on 
school work whatever that went through those team development stages and how did that work so here in summary we have the phases of team development which is forming storming norming performing and maybe a journey and on a team people take take on certain team member roles when they are working in teams. These can be divided into three main categories that are action, people, and thought-oriented behaviors. These come in nine different roles, and this was based on the research by Belbin, and this can be very valuable when we put together and work together in a team. So with that, we will wrap, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Be safe.